Hey guys, welcome back to Treadmill Review Guru. Today we are going to take a look at the Wahoo Kicker Bike. As you can see, this bike is unique. It has a different frame setup and a different overall design than a typical indoor exercise bike. It's designed for cyclists who would like to ride inside, but if you are looking for something that has extremely um, specific adjustments and gearing options that feels very much like riding outdoors, this is a great bike. So let's take an overview of all the different options, the features and specs on the Wahoo Kicker. All right, first off, let's look at the construction and the frame design on the Wahoo Kicker. So clearly you can see it's just a little bit different. Um, and one of the unique features on this bike is that it has multiple adjustment points. And we're gonna get into those in just a second. A uh, quick overview, the bike weighs about 93 pounds. So actually it's on the lighter side, but it's very, very sturdy. It's made of reinforced steel and aluminum, so it's corrosion resistant. Uh, it will support up to 250 pounds. So it has a pretty good max weight capacity. And um, it, it feels stable while you're riding. So initially looking at this, I was like, mm, that's a lot of open space there at the front. You're kind of used to having that flywheel directly underneath you, but this feels very strong. Um, at no point did I feel rickety or like the bike was unstable. I really like the way that they kind of have angled the stabilizers underneath. It makes it easy to get on and off. Um, you, you can adjust several things as far as swapping out components. So you can swap out the handlebars. You can also swap out the seat. And these pedals, you'll notice, they're just kind of a stock pedal that they put on the bike so that you can ride it uh, when you first get it. If you've ever bought a road bike, they come with like these flat stock pedals and they're designed to be replaced with whatever cycling pedal you plan to use. So these are pretty lightweight, just like I said, uh, pretty basic. They're intended to be swapped out. So don't, don't get um, thrown off by the simplicity of the pedal. But there are um, some unique features as far as bike fit. So let's take a look at that. So the first thing that you need to adjust when you get your Wahoo Kicker is to figure out the right bike fit. So if, if you're an indoor cyclist and you're just looking for a standard exercise bike, most bikes are really pretty simple. They'll have three to four adjustment points. So that seat will go up and down, might slide forward and back. The handlebars will move up and down and they might slide forward and back. And that just kind of is a really simple way to help you find the right fit. For indoor cyclists who train long distances outdoors, uh, they might ride a three to four hour ride on one day. Some professional cyclists will ride hundreds of miles a week. And so you really have to find the right bike fit to make sure that you don't develop muscular imbalances, back pain, other things like that. So this bike has been designed to allow you to target different areas and adjust things so that you can find the perfect bike fit. Now, if you are an outdoor cyclist and you already have had a professional bike fit done, just use the Wahoo app, you can go in there, put in your metrics, and it will um, spit out different areas of adjustment so that you can just find the right bike fit and it's really easy. If you haven't had a professional bike fit, you have two options. You can actually take a picture of your road bike up against a wall and the app will adjust based on the metrics that it reads on your road bike and it will spit out the same metrics so that you can then adjust this bike. The third option, which is the easiest, but maybe not as quite as specific, is just to input your body metrics into the app itself. And once again, it will give you those readouts so that you can adjust the bike how you need to. So real quick, the different adjustment points on here, you can adjust the height of the handlebars. So the height of the handlebars is called the stack, and it's just this distance from the handlebar stem down to the top tube right there. You can raise it or lower it depending on your comfort. You can also slightly adjust the handles forward or back depending on how you like to ride. Uh, you can adjust the reach, which is the distance from the nose of the saddle to the base of the handlebars, depending on your torso length. And you can also adjust the setback back here. And that is the distance from the, the saddle, the midline of the saddle to the midline of the pedal. And it's slightly on an angle. If your um, saddle is too far forward and you're directly over the pedals, you're gonna feel like you're riding a unicycle. And if it's too far back, you're gonna feel like you're riding a bike that's too big for you. So adjusting all of these different metrics will help you find the right, the right fit on the bike. As you can see, you can also raise and lower the saddle and you can adjust the standover height, which means the bike frame itself, you can increase or decrease the standover height. The lowest setting is 37 inches and the highest setting is 47 inches. So using this back here, as you can see in the front, um, you have, right now I'm on D, 
So I can pull it out, I can raise it, that's as high as it goes, or I can drop it all the way down to A, and that's as low as it goes, and I lock it into place. So the adjustments on it are actually quite easy to adjust the reach. You just slide the handlebar stem forward up here at the front. I don't want to change it too much because I'm going to write it later. To adjust the setback, you, you use this lever uh, right here on the side. This is how you adjust the handlebar height, and then the saddle is back here. So finding the right fit is the first step you want to do when setting up your bike. Once you have found the right bike fit using the Wahoo app, you then can go in and adjust your gearing. And this is another very specific feature to the Wahoo Kicker. So um, once again, using the app, if you go in, you can change your, your gear, your group set to match how you're riding or the road bike you use outside, whichever you would prefer. And you can make different adjustments within the gearing options um, that I'll go over really quick. So typically on a road bike, you have your front chain ring, which is right up here. And there's varying um, sizes. And you can also have one, two, or maybe even three. One or two is more common. Additionally, you also have a rear cassette on a regular bike. And you might have multiple cassettes. Uh, typically, you have at least two, but once again, it varies. And then, of course, you have your drive, drive system. So depending on the size of those rings, it will change what gearing options are available. A larger chain ring in the front gives you more power and speed, whereas a smaller chain ring gives you like more low gear options. So you can really pedal fast um, on a steep incline or something like that. Comparatively, you know, if you put a larger chain ring in the back, it's going to give you different gearing options. So within the app itself, you can choose one, two, or three front chain rings, and then you can go in and specifically put in how many teeth each chain ring has so that you can adjust your front gearing section. You can also go in and adjust your rear gearing. So there are multiple options that you can kind of calibrate depending on how you are planning to ride and whether or not you want to specifically match your outdoor bike. Uh, but the gearing will affect how the bike functions. It will affect how it feels on those lower gears and it will affect how it feels when you're really cranking and trying to produce some power and speed. So we recommend if you aren't familiar with gearing to figure out what gearing options you prefer or just use the default that's already in the Wahoo app, that's a really good place to start. Uh, once you've figured out your gearing, the uh, Wahoo Kicker also allows you to customize how you manually adjust the gears. So there's three uh, main gearing manufacturers and you can customize this to either match a SRAM, Shimano, or Campanalo uh, set. So, and that just kind of, I use, I use uh, Shimano. So for me, that was kind of the default, which is really easy to use, but it just kind of makes it so depending on how you manipulate the levers, you can increase or decrease your gearing. There is an LED display on the side of the bike and the top number shows you that front chain ring and the bottom number shows you the rear cassette so that you can kind of adjust. Typically you use um, one of your gears to adjust the top chain ring and the other to adjust the bottom, but there is a little bit of variability there. The other really cool thing with this bike is it will adjust resistance based on rider weight and power. So once you've got your bike fit and you've set up your gearing, then you wanna go in and adjust the bike so that it is targeted for your resistance. So we're gonna take just a minute and talk about that. All right, so now we're ready to um, create targeted resistance on the bike. So if you weigh 120 pounds, then your resistance is gonna be a little bit different than a rider that's 220 pounds. Within the Wahoo app, you can go in and do four different tests that will test different thresholds. So one is a neuromuscular power, the other is anaerobic capacity. You also have a max aerobic power, which is basically your VO2 max, and then functional threshold power. If you don't have time to do all four tests before you jump on the bike the first time, that's really understandable. The functional uh, threshold power is also known as F FTP. And if you kind of have an idea of how much wattage you can generate on an average ride, riding about 75 to 85% of your VO2 max, that is a good place to start. Just plug that number in there. Let's say it's 200 watts and then the bike will adjust based on your FTP level. So that's, that's something to look into. The maximum wattage that you can generate on this bike is 220 watts, or two, I'm sorry, 2200 watts. 
So they, it produces a lot of power. And even for some of your, our strongest riders, you're gonna be able to get maximum resistance out of this. But if you jump on the bike without doing some of those targeted resistance metrics, then you might find that the pedals feel weird, you don't have enough resistance under your feet. So make sure you've got your gearing dialed in and you have put in your FTP level. All right, guys, now we are to the fun part. We've done all the technical stuff, we've set up our bike, now you're ready to ride. One of my favorite features about the Wahoo Kicker is it has incline and decline built into the bike. And they've, they've done this in a very innovative way. So I've ridden other bikes that have lean features and they incline and decline, but this feels a little more realistic and I'll explain why. The motor unit underneath the bike is located right here directly under the drive system. So it's kind of in the center of the bike frame. And you can see you have a hydraulic ram down here that will adjust the incline and decline of the bike. It's very quiet and it's very smooth. You have the option of manually controlling it by using the buttons up here on the hood. So that is a 15 uh, degree decline. Now look at the frame of the bike. You can see that whole bike from your flywheel, that rear tire, all the way down to your drops is headed downhill. So it's not just like part of the bike lifts and lowers while the seat stays where it is. The whole thing will mimic the actual gradient. Uh, you can also take it all the way up. So I'm gonna take it up and it will incline to a 20 degree incline. So that's your maximum incline. And once again, you can see that looks like a bike that's headed uphill. And so when you're on the bike, it feels very natural. It really feels like the, the entire bike shifts as you adjust that incline and decline. It has both automated and manual settings. So you can see I can adjust it here manually. I'm gonna set it back to just a level, level floor. Um, you can adjust it manually by using those, those buttons right there on the hood, or it will sync with uh, multiple apps. So the Wahoo Kicker syncs with different third-party apps. If those apps have incline and decline programmed into the app itself and the bike will sync with the app, then it will automatically just follow the natural terrain of when you're riding. And that makes it feel very real. You don't have to adjust anything. When the, when the app heads uphill, you are gonna feel that incline naturally adjust. You can also manually adjust it. So if you want to adjust the incline or decline based on your ride that day, uh, make it a little harder, a little more challenging. You can of course do that using the controls there on the hood. Right on the side, there's just a little display with LED lights um, and you can either lock it so that it's, it's locked in and it's going to follow the automated incline or you can unlock it so you have manual control. All right, so I just wanna give you a quick overview of the functionality of the bike. How does it feel when you're on it? So I've got it at just a flat road right now, no incline or decline. Um, and I'm gonna pedal just a little bit. The motor is very, very quiet. Now there is a little bit of noise while you're riding and that is because the flywheel only weighs 13 pounds. So the most of the resistance is digitally created based on your FTP wattage, your weight, um, and the other metrics that you put in as far as those dimension tests for different types of power and riding. So I have input everything so that it's calibrated to my weight, it's calibrated to uh, my FTP wattage, and I can control the incline and decline right here using those settings, and I can also shift gears just like I would on my bike. Now here's one thing, and it's kind of one of the only few things that bugs me about this bike. There is absolutely nowhere to put my phone. And you might think that it doesn't matter, you can set your phone off to the side, but most of the controls on this bike, if I want to change the resistance, if I want to change little things, I need my phone to do it because I need to be able to access the app. So not having even a tray or anything is kind of a pain. Now granted, they sell third market phone attachments that you can put on your handlebars and that's just fine. Um, but it would be nice to maybe have just somewhere that I could set my phone when I was riding. I'm gonna drop it on the floor. So right here, I'm just gonna show you how the gearing works. So I've got just kind of a little bit of gear on there. I'm gonna drop it down. This is the easiest. And then you can hear those gears adjust just a little. There's third gear, fourth gear, there it goes. It's getting harder. I'm still in the larger chain ring. So I'm gonna get all the way up and you can see it, it produces quite a bit of resistance. Now you can stand up on this bike for sure. 
If you are headed uphill and you want to really lift those glutes, drop your torso and take an aggressive position, the bike will absolutely support it. Um, and you can, of course, adjust your gearing if you need just a little more resistance while you're riding. So I'm gonna take it down just a little, make it a little easier because I'm trying to talk at the same time. All right, right there. So that's kind of my baseline cadence, baseline resistance. It's very smooth. Um, you can see I don't have cycling shoes on. I'm just wearing regular shoes because these are just regular pedals. Most cyclists would have swapped out the pedals and be using cycling shoes. Um, but you can just kind of get comfortable on the bike and ride. Here's my other one minor frustration is you really have to kind of create a setup to ride the bike. So if I want to watch a third party app, you're going to need a table, a computer, a TV screen, um, and different things to make it so that you have one little water bottle holder here. You might want more than that. Um, the bike will sync with like a headwind fan, which is really cool. It will sync with the element GPS system, which is really cool. But there are quite a few different accessories and stuff that you're going to need to really be able to get the most out of this bike. All right. So as you can see, there are a lot of things that I am really impressed with on the Wahoo kicker bike. It has some incredible adjustment features. I love the fact that you can um, customize the gearing based on your configuration. You can adjust the resistance based on your weight and power output. Uh, it just allows you to really create a, a very specific targeted ride. Uh, and it's, we recommend this for people who are looking for those type of specific uh, metrics and measurements. If you are someone who just wants to jump on, do a, do a fun ride and not have to worry about all that stuff, then this might be a little more bike than you need. Uh, and then there's a few things to be aware of. So this bike is designed to be ridden like an outdoor road bike, which like I mentioned, you can lift your hips, you can drop your torso, you can really target uh, that power, but it's not designed for dancing on the bike. It's not designed for tap backs. It's not designed for lifting weights. Like this isn't like other indoor exercise bikes that you might do different things on. It's designed for cycling. So for cyclists, it's hard to find a better configuration than the Wahoo Kicker because it allows you to train indoors on a bike that is similar to your outdoor road bike uh, and that way you don't have to haul your bike in and out. It's very convenient, but it also provides very targeted metrics for, let's say you are an indoor cyclist, but you're looking to take it a step up. You want something that's just a little more targeted, a little more calibrated. This is a great option. A few things to be aware of. They're not necessarily negatives or positives, but this bike is going to require additional accessories to get everything out of it. So, uh, it's really pretty simple. It's functional, but it's simple when you get it. Uh, the headwind fan is really cool. It will sync with that. You also have the element GPS system. It will sync with that. Obviously you're going to require some sort of table or setup where you can put a computer or a TV, uh, or put a TV screen on the wall. Um, it does come with a mat underneath, which is really nice. And then as far as water availability goes, you do have this one little water bottle down here, which will hold like a just a standard um, biking bottle, but there's only one. So for longer rides, you're gonna have to have somewhere to stash additional water. And then my one complaint is nowhere to put your phone. I would really like to see some sort of just a simple phone attachment so that when you first get the bike and you first set up your first ride, you can use the Wahoo app, kind of customize those setting, settings and you don't have to constantly be either leaning off the bike or setting it to the side or whatever. If you go online and look this up, you'll see that some people have really created a cool little cove or setup that makes it perfect for them. They go, they disappear into their corner, they ride for three hours and they're super happy. So the, it does allow you to kind of set, the th set everything up how you like it, but it, you are gonna, you know, you are gonna need just a few little accessories to really get the most out of the experience. Um, if you would like more information on this bike, we have a full written review with detailed information, specs, and photos at treadmillreviewguru.com. As always, you can check us out at Instagram or on Facebook, and we would love to know what you think. If you have a comment or suggestion, leave it down below and we will try to respond. We do provide a link for current pricing down below. 
And if you liked our video, make sure to subscribe and give us a thumbs up. We try to bring you the best in-depth content so that you can make informed buying decisions on all your fitness equipment. So my name's Kristen with Treadmill Review Guru, and I'll see you again soon.